Hi there, I'm Dean, this is Woodwork Journey, and this is the start of Tech Week. Now, this Tech Week is designed to look at two main types of tech that you see a bunch of YouTubers talk about, particularly one of them at the moment, and um, we're gonna see if it can be helpful. Not if it's cheating, but if things like these machines can be helpful for what you do in your workshop. So today, we're gonna be kicking off with 3D printing, where I'm gonna explain how it all works, and let's take it from there. As I said, we're going to be starting things off with 3D printing. Now, 3D printing is that kind of mystic art that a lot of people just don't understand. And so today's video, I think, will give you a rundown of how it works, how it does what it does, how much it costs, and all that sort of jazz. And uh, is it actually very helpful or not? And um, spoiler alert, I think it's super helpful. But we're going to explain everything and we're going to look at a few bits and bobs that I've printed and show you how I use this in the workshop. When it comes to 3D printing, I have been 3D printing on and off for many years now. I started off with an Anet A8 back in possibly 2015, maybe, something, something like that. Um, and then uh, I've moved through a couple of 3D printers, but I haven't done it for a little while. So when I saw this bad boy come up on Facebook Marketplace, this was £100, and I thought, why the heck not? One of the reasons I wanted this is because it did things like self-leveling and what have you, which I will go into in a moment. But yeah, so this cost me secondhand £100. I think it's currently, this model is like under £200 brand new. And I think you can get the brand new um, version four of this for, I can't remember now, but about 220 something like that maybe. Um, I'll try and leave links. This is not sponsored. As I said, I have done the, uh, I, I purchased this with my own money. I bought it secondhand. So this has got nothing to do with anyone. Um, this is genuinely my opinion of 3D printing. So yeah, let me tell you about how they work. Now what we have right at the top up here is a roll of 3D filament. Now this one's called PLA. It's, um, it's a, I think PLA is actually kind of a recycled plastic that's been sort of reused, but there are a lot more um, types of filament coming onto the market all the time. And we're getting better when it comes to being recyclable and all that sort of stuff. But there are some people that reuse this anyway without going too deeply into that. This is um, the uh, the stuff that we're looking at. It's like a sort of a, a plastic string, if you like. Now this comes in 1.75 and 2.85, I think, or two point something or other. Um, most 3D printers work at 1.75. So this 1.75 mil spool um, comes across as one kilogram and it costs about between 15 and 20 quid, I think. Um, and you can get a ton of prints from that. But I will explain a little bit more about that when we get into the software. But it's relatively rigid. Um, but uh, yeah, this plastic feeds into the machine. Right, now when it comes from the spool up top or wherever you've got the spool put, um, it comes in this machine, it comes in the back here, but this is nothing that we have to worry about for the moment. And it comes through this tube and goes into here. Now this section is what melts the plastic. And in here we've got what's called the hot end. And that hot end is hot. And so as, be, as it's hot, it melts the plastic and it squeezes it through a little tiny teeny weeny um, uh, nozzle, which is super hot. And um, it comes out as a string of melted um, filament. I will try and put um, graphics or cutaways or something on all of these explanations if I can, if it helps. But uh, yeah, that's what this does. So um, it comes from the spool, goes into the hot end and comes out of it all melted. Just under here, you might see where the brass nozzle is, and that's where the heated and melted filament comes out of. So if the filament is coming out of here, how does it make pretty patterns? Well, this gantry that comes along the top here actually is focused to, or made, to move up and down. Can you see this threaded rod here? So there's a stepper motor down the bottom here, and then this this piece spins round and it makes this gantry move up and down. And on this model, it has a, um, a unit that I can use to control it. So you might see that it's moving down 
really, really slowly. And it's really not that loud either. So we know how this goes up and down, but how do we get it to go side to side and forward and back? Because obviously this is all connected, so it's not going to do anything. Well, there's a belt that runs across the gantry and goes to a stepper motor on one end. Um, sometimes you can have them on both ends, but there's little wheels and that means that this then moves side to side. Now I can make that happen automatically like that. So we're moving away and it's doing exactly what I tell it to do. And that's great. So that's the side to side movement, but what about front and back? Well, that's different because the actual base here, that's what moves backwards and forwards. So if I move this like this, there you go. I'm not touching it. This is all done by the whizziness. Again, we've got a stepper motor with a belt that brings this base back and forwards. And that means that we've got side to side, back and forwards and up and down. And that gives us all the movement we need for every conceivable type of shape. And so job is a good. Now on this one, we do have a removable build plate, which is really useful. And under here we have um, screws. This is a hotbed. And under, under, under this hotbed, there's actually a heater that makes this super hot. And what that means is that when the build plate is back on there, when the melted filament comes down onto the 3D printer, this is really hot, so it doesn't dry kind of on the way down, if you like. It kind of, it, it continues to melt and dry slowly on the bed, and that means it sort of sticks to the bed, but it also is something that you can take off easily when the print is finished. So yeah, so this heats up nice and warm, and that means that the filament just sits on it and gets a good adhesion to the bed to make sure that um, your model doesn't go flying around all over the place. Place. And then what happens, how this actually works. So it works in exactly the same way I've made this bent lamination, and that is by using multiple layers. And so the machine will lay down the first layer of filament like that, and then it will go over it with consecutive layers and that they will stick to one another because it's still super hot, but when it hits the next layer below it, it cools down and sticks. And so eventually your 3D print builds up layer upon layer upon layer until eventually you've got your, uh, your 3D printed unit, which could be literally anything. Let me show you just a handful of things. Like I say, I've got loads that I've 3D printed on my Instagram, so I strongly urge you go and check that out. But things like these, these are corner clamps. So you can use these with your normal F-style clamps and uh, sort out your corners. I've used these a bunch of times, really helpful. This here is just a bit holder, and also on the back of it, it's got a French cleat. So I can stick it on my French cleat wall, and I haven't had to build it and, dr and drill every single one of those holes, which is a massive pain in the bum hole. Um, we've got this, which as I said, is things like uh, holding cables and keeping that tidy and winding those up. Um, we've got, I've made a, um, uh, a sanding pad. Now, yes, this looks really ugly, but on days where my arthritis is really, really bad and I can't hold onto a sanding block properly, I can hold onto this massive bulbous pill shape thing at the top here and I can sand that way or I can sand that way and I have a, uh, a really solid time with that. So yeah, that's, that's something that I designed just to help me with my um, arthritis. So yeah, that's something that I'm really pleased about. I've designed a bunch of things, um, but I mean, these ones I haven't designed and neither is this. This is part of my dust collection system. So I can add this onto a unit and then my, uh, my 100 mil dust collection is also got magnets in it. It's got another one of these on the other end and plop, it'll just pop itself back on there. Also, we have this legendary thing, which is my 100 mil stuff and the all the yellow stuff there you can see I've 3D printed. So that Y piece and the blast gates are all 3D printed and do a grand job when it comes to sorting out my, uh, my dust collection. Right here, I 3D printed a holder for my sander and underneath it, you might be able to see a yellow thing and that's because I've 3D printed this system, which is not my design. This is something that a chap uh, came up with. I'll, I'll try to leave links to as many of these as I can down below. But this is my cam lock system. So I've got this on my Hyundai VAC, and it means that I can just pop this onto the end of any tool that I want, and jobs are good. Now I did have to design the cam lock one that'll fit into this sander, but it works, and that's gravy. This one right here is not my design, but this works on my track saw. 
So that keeps that nice and easy. Right there is a 3D printed screwdriver, which is ratcheting. When I want to go the other way, I just pull that out, and then I pop that in that side, and where you go. And that didn't exist before I printed it. Again, someone else's model, but it's, uh, it's a really useful, helpful thing. I've even got right here a router, all 3D printed, an old um, chisel for the blade, and away you go. It's adjustable, it's got a wheel to adjust it, and it works really, really well. Not my design, once again, but, uh, but it works brilliantly. Could you make all of these things out of wood? Absolutely you could, but all of these things that I've printed are not used instead of wood, they're used to help me do the other jobs that I have going on. And particularly, it's, it's the cost-effective way of doing things, like the software that I use for this. There's two main types of software. There's one called Cura and one called something beginning with P that I've forgotten the name of. Anyway, someone in comments I'm sure will remind me. Um, Prusa Slicer, there we go. But, um, you know, you, you can you will put in the cost of the filament that you're using and it can break down and say it's going to use 28 grams of filament and it's going to cost you 76p to print that. And um, by doing that, it means you can prototype ideas. It means that you're not um, spending money on tools that you very rarely will use. I mean, things like these clamps, I didn't know if these were going to work at all, these corner clamps, um, but I think they do an absolutely grand job. And, you know, it might have saved me 20 quid or something, but if you save 20, 40, 60, 100, and so on and so forth, then it's, you know, you end up saving an awful lot of money. So is it cheating? Absolutely not, because I wouldn't want to make something like this out of wood anyway, because it's hugely time consuming and no one sees it, no one cares. Do you know what I mean? So in this instance, yes, I think 3D printing is absolutely worthwhile. Hopefully this video has explained a little bit about how it works. Now, if you want me to go into the design process um, or anything else, then I certainly will do. Please do let me know down below. But there is so, uh, uh, way, websites like printables.com and Thingiverse. And if you go to those, I will have all the links down below, then you'll be able to see just a myriad of stuff, of models that other people have designed that you can just print free of charge and um, you know all it's cost you is a bit of electric and a bit of filament and uh, sometimes time. Now it's not all plain sailing because sometimes you do get things like filament blockages and you know stuff can happen and when it comes to um, a lot of the, uh, the, the older printers then uh, you would have to manually level the bed which is just the biggest ball lake in the world. Um, so if you do treat yourself to a, a 3D printer I would try and get one that does automatic leveling um, and, uh, and that certainly helps. Now then when it comes to cost like I said this one is £100 that I pay for it um, second hand you can find loads online and pretty much any 3D printer that you see on Facebook Marketplace, if you search uh, YouTube, you'll see reviews for it from people like Uncle Jesse and all sorts. There's loads of reviews. Now, this is the one, as I mentioned, that I've got back into 3D printing with and absolutely adore it. It does a grand job, um, but it is a bit slow by today's standards. So I have got an Ankermake M5C, which is a new 3D printer, um, which I have got to show you in an upcoming video. That does make everything significantly easier because it pretty much automates everything, but it does cost like three times the price. So, you know, it's one of those kind of, if you spend less, you spend a bit more time fanning around with it, or you spend more and it does it all for you. Do you know what I mean? So, um, and you can do, you can spend thousands on printers if you want to, but for 100 quid, you can get into it, see if you like it, and then take it from there. So hopefully this has helped. Oh, also, silly things. Like I've got all of my dog holes, I've got these little little things that I just printed up using something um, uh, online. And uh, yeah, I, I designed that online and then printed them on the printer. And I've got loads of them and it cost me nothing. Brilliant. <laughs> So yes, I think these are brilliant. If you've got one, please let me know what you do with them.
I'll leave links down below so you've got um, not only links to everything that I've talked about, hopefully, but also links to some other places that actually make stuff as well. So um, if you've got something that you need getting made and um, it's something they already produce or can do for you, then jobs are good in. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, that still doesn't rule you out because there are services, like I said, from the couple of people that I'll put down below, but also sort of nationwide services that um, you send them a file and they print it and where you go. So you can still get into the design thing, you can still use 3D printing and you don't even have to have a 3D printer, which is bonkers. But it's a really, really effective way of helping you in your workshop, in my opinion. Let me know what you think. Thanks very much for watching. If you found this useful, please do hit the like and subscribe button and uh, leave me a comment and let me know what you thought. Much appreciated. And I'll see you very, very soon for the continuation of Tech Week. Ooh.